the next biomolecule that we are starting with are amino acids and amino acids are micromolecules and then we'll continue with many amino acids joining together to form the macromolecule that is protein. So amino acids, amino acids, these are bi uh, micro uh, biomolecules. For protein synthesis, there are 20 amino acids required. But there is a large number of amino acids which are required in the body but not directly for protein synthesis. So about 100 amino acids are required for other functions. Such few examples of this, these category amino acids. One such example is ornithin. Another is histamine. So these are amino acids, but they do not play any role in protein synthesis. So how many amino acids do we need for protein synthesis? That number is 20. Let us first see the structure of an amino acid and then we will come to the classification. Amino acids are basically methane derivatives. And as the name tells us amino and acid. That means it has an amino group and a carboxyl group. So this is the carbon on which one carboxyl group is attached and one amino group is attached. The other valency is satisfied by hydrogen and the fourth valency can have anything. Anything means it could be simple hydrogen to methyl group to a long chain. Depending upon what is here, we will have different types of amino acids. And why is it known as methane derivative? Because in case of methane, the four valencies have hydrogen of carbon. There are hydrogens. So one hydrogen is replaced by amino group. One hydrogen is replaced by carboxyl group. One hydrogen is as it is. And other hydrogen is replaced, fourth one is replaced by anything. So this is how the structure of an amino acid is formed. Out of these two functional groups, the amino group is basic in nature and carboxyl group is acidic in nature. This is the acid group basically. So nature of amino acid would also depend on how many basic and how many carboxyl groups are present. So if amino acid group or amino group and carboxyl group, they are same in number, one basic, one acidic, then the amino acid is going to be neutral. If there are more amino groups, carboxyl groups are less, then the amino acids would be basic. And if it is reversed, like carboxyl groups are more, an amino less, then they would be acidic amino acids. Let us write one or two examples of each. The acidic ones most common, glutamic acid, aspartic acid. In case of neutral, we can write, the, these are examples. In case of neutral, we can write glycine, serine, and in case of basic, we can take the examples of alanine and say arginine. Arginine. So these are few examples of acidic, basic and neutral amino acids. And the nature depends on how many of the basic and how many of the acidic functional groups are present. Another classification of amino acids is based on whether we can synthesize them or not. So there are amino acids which are defined or classified as essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids. Amino acids which are considered as essential, that means they must be present in our diet. Must be in 
our diet and the reason why they should be in our diet because we cannot synthesize them or in other words we can write can not be synthesized by us whereas non-essential amino acids are the ones which even if are not present in the diet that is fine because we can synthesize them so these are can be synthesized by our body and that's why they are even if not present they're not essential in our diet again let us take example of these two categories essential amino acids are tryptophan methionine phenylalanine and non-essential they can be glutamic acid aspartic acid alanine these are non-essential now there is one more category and that is actually kept under essential or it can be kept separate those amino acids are called semi-essential they are essential that means they must be present in the diet but only during a specific stage so they are required only during growth period and lactation so these are the two periods or times when these amino acids are required and here we have the example as histidine and arginine so they are required during these two periods and at that time they must be present in our diet because we cannot synthesize them so this is how we classify the amino acids now we will see the structure of three amino acids depending upon what is at position r so we have seen the classification of amino acids on two criteria essential or non-essential and in essential we have the semi-essential category also and we wrote all the examples this is also one classification on the basis of the functional groups that is neutral uh, basic and acidic oh this is not alanine this is lysine so lysine and alginine these are basic acidic and lysine so now we will talk of three simple amino acids and the basic structure we have already written we will write the same structure here and see what changes make or give us those three basic amino acids so here carboxyl group amino group hydrogen and here is up the second one again a carboxyl group amino group hydrogen and up and the third one also same things here carboxyl amino hydrogen and up if at position of r or the fourth valency of carbon also has hydrogen then this could be the simplest structure and that is glycine this is the simplest amino acid simplest amino acid now if this r is replaced by methyl group then we have alanine this is another simple instead of r there is only a methyl group and the fourth one if this is replaced by ch2 oh then this is serine and by looking at the structure because there is nothing else if we write r then we are not sure what all things are there in this side chain but if we have written hydrogen or methyl group we know there is nothing else apart from this so in this case glycine there is one acidic functional group that is carboxyl one basic so it should be a neutral amino acid so similarly we can find out the types of amino acids on the basis of the functional groups that they have 
how are these amino acids joined they join by formation of a peptide bond now how is the peptide bond formed i'm erasing this name now and instead we will write this amino group at this position to understand the structure so let us see how this group or this bond would be formed now i'm writing this n h2 that is amino group here hydrogen here and r here this also is r so now how is the bond formed the bond is formed between amino group of one amino acid and carboxyl of the other amino acid oh from here and h from amino group is lost in the form of water molecule the bond which is formed is co and h bond co which remains here and nh of amino such a bond is known as peptide bond so when amino acids join each other the bonds which are formed are between carboxyl of one amino acid and amino group of another amino acid with elimination of water molecule so this is also formed by dehydration synthesis and these peptide bonds they can be formed in continuation so we would get a long chain having many many peptide bonds such a chain would be termed as a polypeptide chain and a very big polypeptide chain is known as a protein molecule so this is some basic about amino acids now in the next part we will take up the protein molecules